Hey everybody, it's Sophie and Marco Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. It's just Marco here once again, and I could not believe, guys, what that cup of soup did. Like, it just eating those tiny two little bites where uh, I dip the sandwich in the cup, it really, really screwed things up, so... I just wanted to tell you guys that, like, I was like, how the hell, it was unbelievable, because, like, on Friday, Thursday, Saturday, I was really, like, starting to, you know, feel, like, almost normal, and then, boom. <coughs> so, anyways, I am here today, originally, Safi and I were going to review this One of nine Watergate movies. uh, And also Happy Memorial Day. But then I thought, we have a little bit of cooking to do. And then Safi's going to watch this TV episode tonight. So I didn't really think that it would be good to like do a movie with her as well. You you know, we really want to have a lot of like the day just empty so that we can do a movie or do it ahead of time you know like we don't like to be rushed with our movie reviewing so I thought I should review a movie and uh, I found something just randomly I was randomly searching around and I found this movie called Grey Gardens and this movie is a 1970s movie, so I already was, like, kind of excited. And it, I really, really liked it. I thought, you know, there are some things wrong with it. I would say, like, it's not the greatest movie I've ever seen, but it is up there with some of the best. It, it's, it's very much like what I wanted to do. When I was making my super dumbasses movie, uh, you know, the way that in this movie, it, it, you're completely like in this universe, in this different, it, it is literally like its own universe, this little house in the middle of Nowheresville, and it's like, it, it's a completely different world with different characters and it feels like it it's just so natural and nice to watch it, that like nothing's forced there's no script there's no nothing it's just like an hour and a half of like just pointing the camera and shooting in a good way you know it's not like an art film where you know you're pointing a camera at the wall watching paint dry it's just watching these two women uh, live in this house, this very old and quote unquote run down house. A mother and daughter. And I think, too, the weirdest part was that this movie, this movie was like the closest that I felt to being back home in a weird way. Like somehow, even though. I didn't live in this house. Uh, For some reason, like, it reminded me of that, and it kind of transported me back in that world. Because this is, like, the ideal... (laughs) It's not, like, 100% ideal, but it is pretty much the ideal fantasy life situation. Like, you're in the middle of Nowheresville. You have this pretty old house... And another thing, too, is, like, the way that they talk in this movie, they're like, you know, don't don't talk to anyone from the outside world. We can't trust anyone in the outside world. And I thought, like, it really is like that. Like, you, you're just completely in this, like, nice little fantasy land. I don't want to say uh, completely, because there were some problems that they faced. Um... You know, you saw throughout the movie the conditions 
somewhat, sometimes they're kind of like gross. I would say probably the grossest part was when uh, they're having a party and and they didn't clean off the chairs in the kitchen because I guess they never really eat in the kitchen at the dining room table. So instead, uh, they just put newspapers down everywhere, which was, of course, a lot like Adam Sandler in that uh, Big Daddy movie. And I just, I, I just really enjoyed this movie. Like, I, I, I just, I was like, how, how the hell did I not know about this movie? It, it, it was, it was so nice. It was so pleasant. It was so, uh, it was almost like a, like a, a dream. Like a, you're, you know, you fall asleep and you just have a really nice dream, and you wake up and you're like, yeah, that was really nice. There were some other things, too. Well, a lot of things. Uh, another thing was the fact that I never knew that Hershey's was in ice cream. <laughs> I know that's going to sound weird, but at one point they're eating ice cream, and it, it is Hershey's brand. And I never knew that like Hershey's had a specific brand called Hershey's ice cream. Even though I'm in Ohio... Hershey's is in Pennsylvania. I've never seen Hershey's ice cream before. Or maybe I have and I just don't remember. That That's an X-File. And then another thing that was kind of interesting. They showed this portrait of, you know, you have Big Edith, a.k.a. Big Edie, and you have Little Edie. Those are the characters in this movie. The main two characters. Uh, Big Edie has this painted portrait. And it's sitting in the corner of the bedroom. And I felt like that was probably like the best imagery in the whole movie. Because it was so strange. Like, you know, it's such a grand portrait that you think this should be in a museum. It should be in like a... A mansion or something and it's just sitting at the corner of this like rundown room where like everything's everywhere and it looks very like old and just like completely not the environment that you'd expect this portrait but it, it still looks nice like it's such a good portrait that you know who cares like if I live there I would put that portrait there and then another funny part was when, probably the funniest part of the movie, actually, uh, their cat, one of their cats, they had a black cat, and it went, to, it went to the bathroom behind the portrait, and it was just like looking up at everyone while it was going to the bathroom. It was really funny, the face that it was making. That was one of my favorite moments. And then... Let's talk, let's dissect these characters. I mean, I don't want to dissect them literally because that would be pretty gross. That would be like some Ed Gein shit. But I mean, in terms of character, Big Edie, she's kind of a, she's kind of crazy in a good way. You know, I really loved her singing. And so I would say another highlight of the movie was hearing her sing uh, near the beginning of the film. She has a very nice voice. Um, she's a little crazy, though, because she has a couple, like, moments where she completely, like, does a, like, a one-two lying to you thing where she's just, like, she says one thing one minute and then another moment, she completely shows you that, like, she was lying there because, you know, in the second instance, she does this or says this. And I'm going to talk about those two instances. So first off, I think she said something about, like, you know, her daughter really wanted to get married and have children. And she... She said that she never, like, forced her to live with her or 
never forced her to not marry any guy. But then later on, we find out there's this big sort of conflict. It's just brewing underneath the surface. And it's where uh, she wanted to marry this guy. And he was younger than her. And so the mom did not allow it. Because then he would have been living with them, I guess. Or he he would have taken her away. Because at, at that instance she says, like, I wasn't going to let anyone take her away. So that was a total lie. You know, that was a total deception. And then another thing was she said, like... She said, I've never gotten in a fight with anyone in my whole life. And near the end of the film, she's she's about ready to cane her own daughter to death. Like, it's really hilarious. Because you have a contrast. At the beginning of the film, you have the mom singing. And near the very end of the film, you have the daughter singing. And uh, she she hates the fact that her daughter's singing because she never got any training and you know she kind of thinks that she's like an imposter singer and so she gets up with her cane and it's really funny she's like i hope my bathing suit falls off in front of the camera i oh, i think something already fell off in front of the camera and she's getting up with the cane and she's 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 getting ready to to, to really do some damage and she was getting like really aggravated up to that point and so I would argue that she probably did have a couple of fights because, you know, that was that was almost near a fight, you know, or it was kind of like a one-sided fight. So that was another instance where I felt like she was totally uh, two-faced in the way that she was talking, for for lack of a better word. And then now let's talk about Little Edie. Little Edie was kind of like, she was kind of like the star of the movie because she was a little bit more there. You know, she she talked a lot, a lot, a lot about her past and about how she was really in love with this guy and she was really in love with living in the city even though it was ter- terrible and awful and gross and noisy she loved it she doesn't like living in the country in gray gardens which you know that's that's her preference i don't care but i gotta say little edie is like a she's a babe and i'm really sad that i didn't review this movie on women crush wednesday because i would have subscribed to little edie's only fans like I'm I'm serious like she is she is definitely up there with like some of the best of them and it's really funny too because I could imagine the whole movie I was like I can imagine both of them today I could imagine them both of them in 1980 1990 2000 2010 2020 it's like they're timeless people they're just people in their own little world in their own little environment, and they're not really, like, caring about anything else outside of that world. Uh, In a good way, though. And so I thought that that was kind of cool. Like, I just imagined, like, nowadays, I guarantee that both of them would have cameo, and both of them would be, like, wishing people happy birthday and shit for fucking $5 per person. You know, like, I I thought that that was interesting. Another interesting thing is that there's never really any explanation for why this movie. Like, there's a little tiny caption at the beginning where it says, They were in this house. It was so gross and run down. Uh, Jackie Onassis had to pay for it to be fixed up. Because the health people, the they were going to get kicked out. They were going to get evicted from their own little mansion. And I thought, you know, that's a nice little caption. But then they don't even really do anything to, like, 
bring you in. They just let these characters bring you in. Like if you drop by as a stranger and you just walked in the door and they started talking to you, that's the feeling that you get from this movie. And I thought that that worked for the most part, but there were a couple of instances where I kind of was like, wait, what, who, where, when, (laughs) why? But overall, I really enjoyed this movie. The ending was a little sad, too. Like, it started off on a very, like, pleasant note, but at the end, you, you, you did feel a little hint of sadness because... It didn't feel like this character was going to escape living in Grey Gardens. It felt like she's destined to be there, like she's a, like she's trapped there or something. Uh, not in a negative way, but just in general. Now, before I give this movie a food review, and it is a documentary, by the way, but it, it's a movie to me. So there was this movie that I reviewed last year called Whales of August. (sighs) Guys, Whales of August just got a thousand times more trash. Like, there was a little redemption path that that movie had where I was like, oh, that movie wasn't that bad. I actually, eh, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was at first, but no, it is really, really bad. And I just want to check really quickly to make sure that I, that I am 100% correct and that there's no, there's no error. The Whales of August, 1987. Let's see. Okay, it was based on a play. Well, that's kind of unfortunate because I I almost thought I had the upper hand there. But still, I got to say, guys, this guy who wrote the play, Whales of August, he was definitely, definitely inspired. And I say the word inspired. Inspired, because we all know what inspired means in 2023. Uh, he was inspired by Grey Gardens. Because the only difference, and I mean like one of the, like the only difference is the fact that uh, they're sisters and the fact that You know, there's whales involved, and then their house isn't really run down. But this is literally the exact same plot. Like, it is the exact same characters. You have these two women, uh, opposite personalities. You have this story where one of the sisters, she was forced to kind of live in with the other sister and take care of her. And then, of course, you had the Vincent Price character who came in, and the other sister would not let Vincent Price stay. And then they just live there, deal with each other, have conflict, and then make up over it, and that's the end. That is literally the plot of this movie. Like, <laughs> it's literally the same thing. Like, little Edie was forced to live with big Edie and take care of her and be with her and live with her and then she wanted to get married to this guy and wasn't allowed to and they just lived there like it is literally the same thing guys like it is the same thing I was I was like what the hell so that was pretty surprising because I was like you know Whales of August, as I said in the review, it's one of those movies where it's like, oh, you have these two old people characters, they're going to die pretty soon, so all they do is talk about death, 
and talk about their life's regrets, and it's really sad. But then you have this Grey Gardens movie, and they don't really talk like that at all. Like, they do have regrets that they talk about over and over and over again, but they aren't sad, they aren't thinking about dying, it's not a depressing, dark thing like Wales of August. So I just gotta say, like, everyone who thought that Wales of August sounded bad, go check out Grey Gardens. Because it is Wales of August done right. And done for real, too, because these are just real people living their lives, eating fucking corn on the cob, eating fucking liver pate with mayonnaise on a cracker, handing one to the cameraman. So all in all, for my food review... I gotta say, since I was thinking about Whales of August, I thought about the food that I ate while eating, well, not eating, (laughs) while watching Whales of August, and that is, wait a second, how many was it? Okay, three, like, medium-sized chocolate chip, white chocolate chip pancakes with some maple syrup on top. That is what this movie is. It just brings you so close to home. It makes you feel like you're in this kind of homey environment, even though it's very, like, it is very crappy at some points. Like, you see there's raccoons in the house, and they're feeding the raccoons. Like a whole loaf of bread at once. And and you see it, and it's like, oh, God. (laughs) And there are moments like that that really make you cringe, like, oh, Oh, I wouldn't do that, but it really makes you feel like you're at home, and it's a positive movie. So I would highly recommend this. And I've also looked up, and I saw that this was Winona Ryder's favorite movie, if if you guys are wondering. Like, FYI, she's got good taste in movies, so... uh. That's just, that's perfectly fine with me. Although, I I will say, like, this movie is nowhere near as good as Fright Night. It's nowhere near as good as the top ten movies of all time. But it's up there. Like, I would definitely watch this movie again. It might not be for a while, though, because... Whenever I don't feel well, and I watch something, or I eat something... I kind of just associate those things with not feeling well, so I might not watch this movie for a while, but I promise you guys that I will, because I really, really enjoyed it. It Just spoiler alert, too, I have a list that I have ranked, and I have put this as the second best movie of the year so far, of old movies. And it's better than any new release movie that I've seen all year so far as well. So, that's how good this movie is. So, please like this video, comment, tell me what you thought of the movie, and then please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more honest movie reviews. Bye everybody, see you soon for White House Plumbers.